Hello everyone, it's been a very long time, I think about 18 months since my last video, but I'm back with some more AI in Max MSP tutorials. Uh, we're going to be looking more generally at machine learning today, specifically focusing on the ml.markov object. And if you're not familiar with uh, ml.star, it's a great library by Benjamin Smith of machine learning objects for Max, and it recently got an update with, among other things, this ml.markov object, which is a way of implementing a Markov chain within Max. Um, so first things first, let's go and get that installed. So go into Max, then to the Package Manager, and do a little search for ml.star. Then once you've found that, get that installed, and then we can launch it. And here it's got um, a great little help file with all of the different objects and their own individual help files and a few fun little patches there which you can do a lot with. So we'll go straight into ml.markov. This is the help file for it. Close those down. So yeah, what is a Markov chain? As it says here, it's a stochastic model describing a sequence of possible events in which the probability of each event depends on the state or states attained in the previous events. Um, so what that means is for any given state, whether that's a note or a chord or any, any other type of data, it will have, depending on how it's been set up and trained, it will have a particular probability of transitioning from that state to any other given state in the data. And that can be a little bit hard to conceptualize if you're not too familiar with this world, but uh, there's a good uh, visualization of it here on this website. I'm going to put all of these links in the description. So here it shows, for example, a simple two-state Markov chain. So you've got state A and state B. And again, these can represent anything you like. But as you can see, it's got a particular probability. It doesn't say the exact values, but a particular probability of transitioning back to the same state or to the other state. And you can see, if you read through this whole website, it's very informative. But you can see that Markov chains can get ridiculously complicated. And even this is fairly simple for a Markov chain. Um, but you can have as many states as you like. They don't all have to be interconnected. They don't have to have equal probabilities of transitioning from any one state to another. Again, it depends entirely on what you're doing with it and how you're setting it up. Uh, so ml.markov then. We, as it shows here, we have to provide it with some training data. So the um, creators have provided this little list of integers here. Um, and if you have a, a second looking at it, you'll see that it's actually uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. You know, dub 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 dub, etc. And we're going to send all of that into the ml.markov object. And anything that gets sent out from it, it's going to add 60 to it. So 0 will become 60 so that it's notes that we can actually hear and aren't at like 20 hertz or anything. Um, and so, um, yeah, so it was going to read that all sequentially and it will learn based on this data, what the relative probabilities are of transitioning from any given state to another state within this training data. So once you've clicked this and sent the training data in, we have to build the model by sending in this message that says build, and then we turn it on because every time ml.markov receives a bang, it will output a new state based on what has been trained. So we can turn a metro on to do that continuously. I'm actually going to send this out into Logic because I prefer the piano sound. Um, so let's see if this has worked. If we turn it on. So we can see those are all notes from Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Um, they're not being played in the same order, but they are being played um, in a sequence that is very reminiscent of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and it's not doing any transitions between notes that do not appear anywhere within that melody. So, for instance, it's not going from the dominant to the mediant, because at no point in this training data have we got a 7 followed by a 4. So that's a very, very um, simple Markov chain. Um, but what we can do to make things a little bit more interesting or more complex are by changing the order of um, steps that it's considering. So as it says here, order specifies how many previous steps are considered significant in predicting the next step. So basically, if we change this to order two, it's not just going to consider the note it's last played, but also the note before that when making a decision as to what to play next. And we can make a prediction just by looking at this training data of 
what this is going to roughly sound like because as we can see here at no point have we got a, a note being played just once we've got them all being played twice so we can accurately predict that anything this now plays out once we rebuild it um, it will only be playing out pairs of notes to get a bit stuck there if we rebuild it you should be able to hear should hopefully hear the da 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 instead hey there we go so yeah so um that's the very very most basic form of a markov chain that we can use to make some music and it's it's interesting you can probably already see how you can use that to do some cool things musically um, but it goes into a bit more detail here with midi files which is what we're going to be focusing on for the remainder of this video and he's provided here um, this midi file which is the prelude from Bach's first cello suite and if you don't know that by name you'll know it by um, hopefully by listening to it that sounds a little bit like this again let's send that out and we've got this. Yeah, so maybe maybe you recognise that, maybe you won't, but uh, we're going to reset the Markle Chain object, reconfigure it, and then what we can do, instead of having to play the MIDI file and listen to it all the way through, we can click this instead, because uh, if you've never used the sequence object before, um, if you press, a, if you send a message saying start into it, followed by, I think it's 1024, it will play the MIDI file at normal speed. And depending on, you know, if you multiply that number, you can play it really, really quickly. So uh, apologies in advance, this is going to sound very chaotic. Lovely. Um, so it doesn't matter how quickly we play it into here because this ml.markov object is only listening to pitch values, not how quickly they're being played, how long they're being played for, any of that lovely stuff. Because as we can see here, it's taking out each MIDI note, unpacking it into pitch and velocity, and stripping out note off messages. So it's only sending in pitch values that are note ons into here. So we've sent that, we'll build it, and then we'll turn it on and see what it sounds like. So that's Bach. Um, it's not particularly original or particularly interesting, but we can hear how there are, you know, it, it's very much that piece, but broken down into components, which are sort of being um, put back together in interesting ways. And you can do a lot of cool things with this. And what I'm going to do now, actually, is take all of this and copy it into a new object, a new patch so that we can start messing around with this and making it more interesting. Let's get rid of these messages because we don't need them. So what can we do to make this more musical, more interesting? We don't need the dump message. Well, on a very basic level, we can include some more dynamic changes in this. And now I think the prelude MIDI file, again, make sure that's changed. I believe that the all of the MIDI notes in this file are of the same velocity. If I just quickly double check that by hearing what these sound like. Yeah, so they're all 64, but that's all right. They've got unlimited MIDI files online. Um, again, I'll provide the links here, but I found when I was testing this, I decided to get Eric Satie's Gymnopédie number no. one for solo piano um, and do that, download the MIDI file for that. Um, and if you take it and then put it somewhere in your max file path, as I've done here with my AI folder, and then we can refer to it in this patch. So we're going to do read space, and then we have to do the file name, which in this case is sati gymnopedi underscore number one dot midi, I believe. 
and then we can send that into here, here, and here, the same way that this one is, so that whenever you read a new MIDI file, it will reset and reconfigure the Markov chain. Now let's just test this, and again, if you don't know this, it sounds a bit like this. <laughs> With strings, that sounds amazing. Anyway, let's put it back to piano for now. So we know that. So again, we'll reread it, reset it, reconfigure it, play it really, really quickly. Lovely. Build that and then see what it sounds like just being played normally through the same setup that we've done before. That already sounds quite cool, but um, I'm going to, as we said, start doing some interesting dynamics with that. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, just to save having a million and one patch cables going everywhere, I'm going to take all of these messages that need to go into the Markov objects, because we're going to have multiples of them, and we're going to just do a good old send and receive. So we're going to do send to Markov, or whatever you want to call it. Get rid of these cables and get rid of that one. In fact, we can just bring the build object over here because it doesn't matter where it's placed. And then connect all of these up to this send. And then we'll set up a receive to Markov to send into here. And then we're going to duplicate these because we want another Markov object with this receive being sent to it. And what we want to do here, because at the moment, as I say, we've got the gated pitch values going into this one Markov object so that we don't have any note-offs, we're going to do exactly the same thing but with the velocity values. So we'll duplicate this nice little setup with the gate and all of that. But instead of sending the pitch into the gate, we're going to be sending the velocity into the gate. But we'll also be sending it into here so it still filters out the note-off messages. Okay, if that makes sense. And then we can send that directly into ml.markov, which is nice. So then hopefully the ml.markov object will be sending out the velocity values, which we can then send into here of make note. And I'm actually going to add a plus object after this so that we can control the overall dynamic level if we so desire. It's depending on what instruments we're using and how the MIDI file has been configured. It may be too loud or too quiet, who knows. We will leave it at plus zero for now and add that to there. Now this is all connected up, so if we read it one more time, play it one more time. Lovely, and then build both. We should, all being well, I'll put a little integer so that we can test that. We should get some different velocity values out. We are not because I'm not banging it. Hey, rookie mistake. There we go. Now I'm not going to send this into the send and receive quite yet because as you'll see in a minute we won't need this for very long but let's do that again. Just rebuild them and then hey, that's what we want. Lovely. And let's change this so we make it order 3 instead of order 2. It's going to be a little bit closer to the original, but it should hopefully not transition quite so um, quickly between loud and soft. Still a little bit, but that's fine. So um, that already sounds quite good. Um, so how can we make this even better? Well as you can probably tell by just listening to it, we're only playing one note at a time. Now the original the Gymnopody obviously has tons of chords in it, and that's what we want. We don't want it to just be monophonic, we want these Markov objects to be able to play chords as well. Um, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to take these gated pitch values, again, I'm going to get rid of this, and we're going to send those into yet another Markov object. So we'll duplicate this, send it 
right down here because we're going to need a couple of bits here. So the gated pitch values, we're going to send these into a trigger. So T, B, I. So we'll be sending them out as integers and then a bang afterwards. Let's move this out of the way. So we're going to be sending out the integers of the pitch values and then grouping them together using zl.group. And I'm not going to give that an argument as you normally would to group them into a list of specific length, because what we're actually going to want to do is have a slight delay and then send a bang into it so that it bangs out the number of how many notes that it just heard within a very short period of time. Um, now, with a MIDI file, obviously, if it's a chord, all of these notes will be being played instantaneously. But if we just connected up the bang straight to the ZL.group, it would still send them out instantaneously as individual messages. So we want to delay it very, very slightly, but not long enough so that it accidentally picks up other individual notes, considering we're playing the file really, really quickly. Um, so I'm going to use a delay object, and I think one millisecond would probably be okay, but again, considering we're playing it so quickly, I'm going to go better safe than sorry. We're going to do at delay time so that we can put it in different formats, and we're going to just do 10 samples. And unless you're working at some ridiculous non-standard sample rate, um, this should be absolutely fine. Um, it will group together. Um, all the pitch values that are being played instantaneously and then have that cleared for when other individual notes come in. And we're then going to take that list that we've then created and find out how long it is. So how many notes are involved in that chord and send that number directly into this ml.markov. And that is going to be the data that this Markov chain will be trained on, the numbers of notes that are played at any given time. And whatever is sent out of there, we're going to also do a TBI because we're going to want to set up an Uzi that will send out X number of bangs, where X is the number of notes that we want to be played instantaneously. And we're going to get rid of the bang going into the pitch controlling ML.Markov and instead send it into the number of notes controlling ML.Markov. And then this Uzi will control the notes here. So it will then play the number of notes at a time that we want. And I believe that should be all set up correctly. We've got the receive going into there. So let's do exactly the same thing again. We shall click here and we shall build it and then play it really, really quickly. <laughs> Yummy. But then if we turn it on, and in fact, I'm going to make it a little bit slower because we don't want it playing quite so quickly. We'll also change up the length of the notes. So we'll do, let's say, 800 and make the notes 1,200 and see what that sounds like. Did I build it? I'm building it again just in case. Let's see what that sounds like. Some reason I took the bang away from the dynamics so we lost all the dynamics there let's try that again if we rebuild it there we go excellent so we've already just with a few tweaks made this a lot more interesting and have a lot more potential and um, let's just test it with a couple of other MIDI tracks. I, when I was testing again, downloaded a couple of um, Debussy tracks. I did Claire de Lune because why not? Everybody knows it, everybody loves it. And I also did another little personal favourite of mine from Debussy's oeuvre, um, Children's Corner, the first piece of that, Dr. Gradus ad Parnassum. Um, so we'll add both of these in. Do not N, we want to do M. Read. 
bbc underscore children's corner underscore one dot mid and send that into all of them boop, boop, boop. and read deb underscore clay dot mid and send that into all of them let's try children's corner first and if again if you don't know this is what that sounds like which is very nice and um, so again we'll reset that set the order up really really quickly <laughs> excellent and um, build that and then let's make these make this a little bit longer So not as many chords in this one, but still the occasional one for interest. And then finally we'll do Claire de Lune. We'll put it back to piano because you've got to do piano for Claire de Lune, haven't you? Do that, read it. Build it. We don't want it quite that quick. We'll do 400 and... like a kid who's just discovered MIDI for the first time. So you can already hear we can get some really, really cool stuff out of ML.Markov with just a few tweaks, but we can go even further. I'm going to leave that until next time, I think. But what we're going to do in the next video is take all of this, add even more onto it so that we've got notes with varying length and varying length between new note onsets. So we can hopefully get it sounding even more musical. Um, but please subscribe to my YouTube channel and leave a comment below if you want to see any more of this. And please like it and share it with your friends. And I will see you all next time. Thank you very much for watching.